Okay, fellas, so what we got here is a Forney Easy Weld Plasma Cutter. Now, I've been putting off buying a plasma cutter for years because I don't have 240 in my garage, but come to find out, I never needed it. This thing cuts a quarter inch steel just fine. I'm going to do a quick demo of a cut on this piece of metal here, but first I want to show you a couple of um, quarter inch thick pieces of aluminum I cut. Now, I'm new to using the machine, so just understand that the performance of the machine is affected by the user heavily. But the fact that it could cut this was impressive to me. I mean, that's anyone who's ever worked with aluminum knows how much heat it can absorb and how hard it is to melt it. So I've got this for about 325 bucks. Definitely a pretty nice unit. I'm gonna do some uh, reviews on this down the line when it breaks down, let you know how long it lasts. I'm posting this video as kind of a marker to indicate its lifespan. And um, I'll do a quick demo to show you how nicely this thing cuts. And I'm definitely not good at this. As I said, I am a novice at this and I certainly wasn't trying to make that a clean cut I just wanted to show you guys how fast it can cut if you get good at it they're going to be sitting there jacking around I'll give that a quick sand down and call it a day in my world but uh man this thing is so much better than cut off wheels and all that other stuff and like I said I didn't realize that a 120 volt unit could work so effectively I had no idea for the type of stuff the average hobbyist does or someone who's doing a lot of um, small fabrication. This thing cuts up to a quarter inch metal. It's, um, there's no need for 240 volts in my opinion. I don't know what they're cutting that would need that much, but um, obviously if you're cutting thick stuff, you're gonna want more power, but just for like the average shop, you know, a little gig like this, I do not need a 240 volt plasma cutter and I wish I'd have known that years ago. This thing has a built-in inline dryer inside of it. However, I have connected one of the units that I sell online on my website. This is a massive industrial inline dryer. If you were to buy something like this online, it'd cost you 700 bucks, 800 easy. And it'd be made out of cheap materials. You can run this thing over with a tractor. Don't ask me how I know that. Getting ready to cut this old wheel off. Just replace it with a new wheel. But I wanted to warn people, anytime you see this color, that's cadmium dichromate plating and it's very dangerous stuff. Um, I just cut this other wheel off and man, did it put on quite a show. This is pretty interesting, check this out. A lot of it's from the plastic combusting in that plastic wheel. Nonetheless, that um, put on a lot more of a show than I thought it would. A little nip on there. Man, I love this thing. I don't know how damaging it is to do that, so I'm not going to do it again. I'm not quite sure why this thing requires an electrode. Perhaps it aims the dart or the plasma beam a little better. I do want to mention, uh, I want to show you guys how thin of a line this stuff will actually cut. Watch this. Okay, let's start from here. When I first got it, it was even smaller than that. These tips are consumable. They're quite pricey, by the way. I think the replacement set is like 30 bucks. 
But nonetheless, when I first got this, I swear the cutting hole or the width of the cut was barely a sixteenth of an inch. It was super, super tiny. It has widened a little bit. It's almost tripled in size. But uh, nonetheless, very impressive machine. I want to find out more information about this machine. And I'm also thinking about opening it up, taking a look on the inside and seeing what they got going on in there. I'm interested to see what the inline dryer canister looks like. I wonder what the desiccant consists of. This one here is just your silica gel desiccant with orange indicating beads. Oh, you can see the beads down in there. But uh, yeah, that's where we're at. So glad I bought this thing. So there's one thing I do want to point out about plasma cutters that a lot of people may not realize is that they operate at a much higher voltage than a regular welder. Regular welder is on the order of 30 volts, you know, some up to 70 in power plants and things like that. But that's only because of the long distances, but um, this thing's hitting like 80 volts. And if you touch it when your knees are touching the ground or something, you'll get a little bite even when the machine's off. When I touched that, I was getting bit because my knees were touching the ground. So, something to know. Here's the duty cycle information. It's actually fairly good.